Hello and welcome to Ducas Copy TV. I'm Andrew Sachs McLeod, Chief Executive Officer of Finance Feeds. And today, joining me in the studio here in Geneva, Switzerland, is Bart Burgraf. Hello, Bart. Hey, Andrew. How's it nice, going? Very good. Nice to see you. Now, Bart is, is a partner at Media Group Worldwide, which is a specialist digital marketing agency that specializes in the financial services sector. And Bart looks after the London side of the operations. That's right. So today we're talking about a very interesting subject, which you and I have talked about for quite some time. Right. But it's because, which is the subject of acquisition, positioning, and retention of how a retail company can make sure that it, it maintains its position in the market and keeps its customers. And this has become something which is, used to be a challenge, is, is now problematic. Because of all the competition in the market, right? Most certainly. Um, this is a very extensive subject, so we'll probably be talking about this for, for weeks and weeks if, <laughs> <Very> we, <likely. laughs> if we go into much detail. Um, uh, as I said, especially because the market is so uh, uh, competitive, uh, brokers really need to do their best to um, to to, sh to show the target audience that they're uh, different, that they're suitable for them. Uh, th they need to have operational excellence in terms of acquiring customers, and once they have those customers, they need to do whatever it takes to to keep them on board, to keep them trading, to keep them happy. Um, and, uh, and to earn more of them, basically. Um, so the acquisition part is something w uh, which you hear a lot about. Uh, there are not a lot of brokerages that are really, um, let's say, um, top of the class in terms of acquisition. Uh, but it's, it's, it's understood by most. Um, the retention part is more difficult. Uh, most brokers tend to know that um, they, they, they lose a lot of traders because um, because they lose their money, and so they need to stick with them and educate them, try to 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 get them to make better trading decisions. Yeah, which is expensive when you bear in mind that that the lifetime value of a small uh, of one of the smaller retail traders is just a few months. Right, exactly. Uh, and so a lot of it is being done manually by salespeople, and they're spending an inordinate uh, amount of time uh, focusing on the uh, on the eighty percent of the customer base that perhaps makes 20% of a broker's income. Yes. Um, I think with marketing automation and with sales automation, um, you're able to, um, to very effectively uh, predict which customers are going to be your best customers, um, to keep an eye on, the, on, on, on what you're earning on those customers, what yeah, the lifetime certainly. value will be. Do you believe in that? I, that's, that's something which has cropped up a lot recently, is optimization, automated optimization, <laughs> yeah. automated retention tools. These are external companies that you can form a partnership if you're a company right. with and use their services. And they, they will say that it will go through, automatically go through the CRM and make sure it doesn't, you know, it works out even that even a dead lead is not really a dead lead or it works out which customers they should, which are looking at the specific site now and mm -hmm. it should, does this really work? Well, uh, I mean, it works in a way. I, I wouldn't buy a packaged software uh, and, and use an external company and pay them lots, of, lots of fees for that. 100%. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there are tools that a broker can use. Uh, if they use an open CRM system like Salesforce or Microsoft Dynamics, yeah. uh, they can then use bolt-ons like uh, marketing automation tools, uh, Marketo or Eloqua, yes. others that, that tell uh, what pages a lead visits on a site um, that, that can calculate the score in terms of quality of that lead and will we'll tell a salesperson, hey, perhaps when you pick up the phone in the morning, this is the first lead that you should yes. call. Um, and, and similarly, uh, with uh, automation and with CRM tools like this, you're able to, uh, to, to get back office information like uh, trading volume and trades that they've yeah. done and use this information to predict things like, is this customer going to become inactive soon? Or, or there's suddenly a, a very strong uptick in trading behavior. Maybe a salesperson should pick up the phone, right? Yeah. So uh, our sort of philosophy to this is that the sales infrastructure in order to convert leads in order to to earn more on clients is something that marketing should lead. I see that makes sense. I think I'd like to what what um, that will lead on to is the yeah. difference between certain companies that use a low touch model like that where they would uh, as you say churn and burn and yeah. actually effectively buy leads and then really employ a big sales force and do lots of telesales or digital marketing and then get one one time customers for five or six thousand right. dollars deposit or the high touch uh, where you spend a lot of time and a lot of expense actually with the customer before they even become a client. 
Yeah, so, so that that really that exists in a few cases, um, but I think it's more varieties of the first that you mentioned. No, certainly. So it's like plus five hundred on the extreme side. Exactly. And exactly. then there's 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 uh, um, Saxo Bank or, yes. or other companies that are a little bit more um, uh, high touch and that are that are providing service. Well, and certainly, and I think here in Switzerland that is it's interesting that you should mention Saxo Bank. That's a very good example. Here in mm -hmm. Switzerland, there are not very many. Swiss banks that are forex companies. You have Saxa Bank, IG Group, IG Bank, as they are here in Switzerland. Corner Bank, Swiss Quote. Swiss Quote. Dukas Copy. Dukas Copy here, yes, absolutely. And the thing is that they have a very high touch model when they're dealing with local Swiss customers. They spend mm -hmm. a lot of time with them. Uh, yesterday I was with IG Group's uh, Swiss CEO, Farad Bajali, and he was explaining that um, one of the things they must do is part of Swiss culture. They will the customer will expect to research everything long term before, and it costs the company a lot of money up front, but there's no retention costs. Right. Because the customer has to go through all that bureaucracy of becoming a customer, and yeah. they are sure they're going to go ahead and that's it, they won't change. I, I think the Swiss market is very special. Uh, people here are used to a certain level of service, that's they pay right. higher fees. That's right. I think that's going to change once the market opens up. Um, I mean, we saw an incredible influx of uh, brokers coming into Switzerland at some point. Then they all needed to get bank licenses, right, and there were did. just a, a few left. Uh, it, I think at some point, um, when Switzerland opens up more, that's that's going to come. Uh, just in terms of the um, in terms of the customers, in terms of the sophistication, uh, I, I think they're a bit behind in the rest of the markets. I think there are um, uh, other uh, areas, countries, where there are similar things. Uh, I'm, I'm naming a country like Singapore, mm -hmm. where you really need to have a local presence. You do. You, you need to go and meet customers. To, a lot to, of institutional business in Singapore, right. Though, right? Rather than here, you have a lot of wealth management and things like that. Mm -hmm. so Singapore is like that, but it's got a lot. Of, it's like Switzerland, but it has a lot of institutional interbank order flow. Right. Compared to here. But I think that what, what I'd like to, to, to move on to next, next time is to talk about the difference between how, how a company should position itself. What type of company would position itself towards high touch? Right. And where? And who is going to stick to the original, the traditional telesales and digital media marketing model? Right. And why that is still effective in today's terms. Yeah. So that that will be a very interesting subject to move on to, and we'll certainly talk about that in the next in the next episode. Let's do that, Andrew. Thank you for joining us, Bart. Not a problem. Bart Burgraff, managing partner, Media Group Worldwide. See you soon. Thanks. I'm Andrew Sachs McLeod, Chief Executive Officer of Finance Feeds. You've been watching Dukas Copy Television. See you soon. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.